Good afternoon, everybody. This is Eric with American Business Systems and want to welcome you here this afternoon. Obviously, today's topic we're going to talk about about creating a constant stream or a constant stream of customers for your new business. Obviously, folks, this is going to be about marketing, how we show you what you're going to need to do to get your clients and how we actually assist you on getting those clients. So we'll be talking about many different topics today, but it's all going to be focused on getting doctors in this, what you would think, this funnel this pipeline of folks that you can start working with as you get this business started. We'll talk about all different types of uh, strategies that we talk about in our training class. Uh, we feel like there's not enough information we can give you. So we're going to do all that we can to within the hour that we have to pack in as much information as we can to help you, at least as you're doing your due diligence in uh, becoming an ABS licensee of ours here at ABS. So again, just sit back for the next uh, few minutes here. Uh, obviously, you're going to want to take some notes. Again, my name's Eric with American Business Systems and the Director of Research and Development here. And I uh, just want to tell you that we've been around for 24 years, folks. And Patrick, it's good to have you here this afternoon. Hey, good to be here. This is uh, one yeah. that a lot of people ask questions about. You know? I like, know one of the books. Oh, go ahead. No, oh, they, they usually ask questions about how, how do I get clients? And so this one really yes. kind of zeroes in on that. You know, a lot of these uh, principles we're going to talk about today apply to any kind of business. But specifically, of course, yeah. we talk about ours because, well, people are on the webinar usually because they're interested in our business. Yeah. And so, folks, uh, here's some books that you've written. And Patrick, I think you're right in the middle of writing another book and maybe even with Dr. Rackner. And, and I think you're going to be interviewing her soon in the next few weeks as well. Uh, I know we're going to be talking about the new thriving medical practice, but um, just, uh, I mean, you're a busy guy. <laughs> yeah, last uh, last Friday, in fact, uh, I had Dr. Vicky on as a guest. Now on Fridays, we do webinars similar to this one, except it's for our licensees, people who've actually been through our workshop, graduated, uh, they've gotten their certification as a certified medical revenue manager, and they're off and building their business. So we bring on Dr. Vicky because again, she as an ex-surgeon, uh, I guess you would call an uh, ex-surgeon, I guess she's still a surgeon, but she's not in practice. Uh, she basically helps our licensees know how to approach the doctor and what to say and why the doctor needs their services. So yeah, she's been a real, real blessing to us as a company. You bet, you bet. Uh, before we start that, Patrick, uh, this is, this is so the, one of the reasons why um, our licensees and we here at ABS are able to strategize a different look on how the doctors do their billing. We call this our ABS advantage. Uh, and I thought this was a great foundation for us to kind of talk about as we not only see some of the blogs that we're going to share, share with everybody now, but this can be sort of the foundation that lays out everything that they, you know, we will be able to talk with doctors obviously the folks that are on the webinar, but uh, maybe let's explain this and how all of this works together and how all this actually came together. All right, so we, I just mentioned that we graduate people as certified medical revenue managers. Folks, that's just a fancy way of saying that you can handle everything that has to do with the revenue inside of a doctor's office. Now that includes the billing. So a lot of people think of our business as uh, the medical billing business. We're gonna teach you how to become a medical biller. Well, that's true. We have iClaim, which is our practice management system. That means it is the billing system itself, but it ties directly into through the cloud. This is a cloud-based system, so all they have to have is uh, an internet connection in the in the office there. It ties in with the doctor's electronic medical record system. We call it EMRX. And uh, that is what the doctor uses when they're actually encountering the patient, usually using an iPad. And then of course, once all that information is in the system, our licensees that we've trained to actually run the system and manage the claims, send it through what's called a clearinghouse. Now, it just happens that we're the only system that we know of out there that has our own built-in right. clearinghouse. It's not a third party, a separate company. It is us. And so we uh, we do the what's, what's called uh, the scrubbing of the claims, making sure that there's no errors. And then, of course, we submit them to all the insurers that are out there. And then, of course, we have the patient portal. And Eric, I don't even know where to begin on this. A lot of people have seen right. patient portals, but... This one's got all the latest technology in it, including the ability to have uh, appointments with the doctor right through the right. patient portal using uh, videos just like you and I are right here on this video today. Yeah. 
You bet. And Patrick, you know, some some folks may even think that having your own built-in clearinghouse may be a disadvantage because, uh, quote unquote, some people would say you can't choose your own clearinghouse. I mean, you're kind of forced with what ABS gives you. Uh, but actually, this is the biggest asset to what we do here. Uh, folks, if you can imagine this, imagine that it's because we've got this part of the wheel or the cog in, in everything of what's going on with the billing. Just know this, that with our iClaim system and the clearinghouse all being together, as Patrick just mentioned to you, we're actually able to get claims directly from the iClaim practice management system or the billing system directly to the payers. That you can't do that with any other third party clearinghouse. Uh, so if you haven't seen this in action, get with the person that brought you to the webinar today and ask them to see a demonstration of the software. That's the best way to show it to you. So I, I want to kind of dispel that myth, Patrick, that saying uh, ABS won't let you choose your own clearinghouse. You have to, you're forced to use theirs. That is our, our advantage here clearly in uh, getting well, doctors paid. I can't help but think of when uh, my wife and I started doing medical billing back in the late eighties. And uh, when we did, of course, we had to choose our own clearinghouse. Well, there was a dozen of them out there. Now there's probably two or three dozen. And it's not as simple as it seems. Lots and lots that, that's involved. And first of all, finding a clearinghouse that has good customer service and that their claims rejection rate is down where it needs to be. Now, nationwide, right. that can run anywhere from a 20 to 30 percent rejection for most doctor's offices and for more, most software systems. Ours, because our clearinghouse is built into the system now, is less than 2%. Now, let that sink in for a moment, folks. 2% rejection rate compared to even 5 or 10%. It's, it's, it's thousands of dollars a year in the doctor's pocket that they would not see otherwise. So that's one of the huge advantages right. that we have over all the other companies that are out there uh, showing people how to, how to do medical billing. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Patrick, you had mentioned the other day and reminded me of some of the work that Adam's doing with our blogs, with our Twitter account, with our Facebook account. And uh, I know we wanted to kind of showcase this a little bit as we get started. And folks, again, all you got to do is go sign up right over there where it says, you know, sign up and, and follow us right up here. Um, I mean, we're going to look at this first one here. This was just an article that came out March the 22nd. Uh, the Factors driving the growth of RCM. What is RCM, Patrick? Revenue cycle management. In other words, managing the revenue cycle, all that has to do with getting money in from the insurance companies, Medicare, Medicaid, and the patients inside the doctor's office. So RCM includes all of that. Right. And then uh, this, this other article that uh, was, I guess this is the one that we were talking about, just the expected boom here. Uh, what's going on with uh, this particular article. Um, folks, if you get the handout, you'll see that we put the uh, URL right down below there. But Patrick is just saying that it's driving the growth of the markets uh, because of the de decreased reimbursements. Yeah, this particular article came out uh, in February. So it's really recent. And <laughs> Look, we could have written this headline ourselves, Eric, because it sounds like something that we're trying to tell the people on this webinar today. That is that this market right here that we're telling you to get involved in is going to be booming in the coming years. And on the next slide, Eric, I think I actually put the quote there uh, from this article. Uh, look at this, folks. This actually is telling us specifically that uh, according to research and, and markets, that's a magazine, the market for these solutions is expected to be worth more than 90 billion worldwide by 2022, up from about 51 billion last year. So folks, this thing has a huge growth. I mean, if you were looking at any industry and trying to get in something that has some growth in it, healthcare is it. I mean, it's it's uh, <laughs> it, it's close to 25% of the entire GDP in the United States right now. Yeah, no doubt. Folks, you can see up at the top, we've got healthcare finance. If you want to go follow those group, this group, you can get their email feeds right into your own email. So if you're doing due diligence and you're looking to be part of this market, you might as well start getting the information now, seeing the same things that we're seeing. And it's just good for you to kind of follow up with that. One more article that this guy uh, pushed out, and this was just at the beginning here of April, uh, but with physician billing, there's 
Uh, and this is a big gap. This is one of the things you kind of said, Patrick, 11 to 54 billion of challenged revenue each year, study funds. Uh, building private insurance is tough, but Medicare is harder. You know, it's it's hard whenever you're you're using maybe some antiquated means of processing claims, but we're we don't see that Medicare or Medicaid is that difficult processing claims through our system. It's hard for most systems because they don't have the integration that ours has in it, like we showed you on that previous chart. And by the way, that 11 to 54, Eric, when, I, when you read the article, it's saying that 54 billion was unchallenged last year, but that up to 11 billion could be uh, reclaimed uh, if people were doing it the right way and using the right technology. So even wow. 11 billion, forget about the 54 billion, if we could just get $11 billion in that's not being gotten in right now for doctors, that would be a huge increase in revenue for all doctors. You bet. So again, we've got the URL down there at the bottom. If you've downloaded the handout, you'll be able to grab it, check that out and go look at those and keep these articles as you're doing your due diligence. Well, Patrick, I know that everybody kind of came in here uh, wanting to know how to create a constant stream of, of leads. I'm not sure what happened there with the, <laughs> with the uh, that part of it, but you know, hey, it's it's live. We're 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 doing uh, everything that we can do here, but uh, you and I were having a dis a really great discussion yesterday about doctors because someone asked me yesterday about doctors. Why are they leaving medical practice? Why are they getting bought up? But you and I had this great discovery <laughs> discussion yesterday. Doctors are entrepreneurs themselves. Yes. Uh, and of course, most people who've worked for a doctor or in a doctor's office will tell you they're the worst business people that they've ever met. But that's because they're not trained to run a business. They're trained to uh, help people get well and uh, do surgery and things like that. So when they go out in the real world after they graduate after, what, 12 years of school and uh, yeah. internship, now they've got to figure out how do I run it as a business? How to become, how to become an entrepreneur? Now, folks, all of you yeah. on this webinar today, you're here because you want to be an entrepreneur. You want to own your own business, manage your own time, take off when you want to, uh, do, do what you want to do with your life, right? Well, doctors want the same thing. That's, that's what dawned on me and Eric yeah. is that it's exactly the same thing for the doctors that are in private practice. And believe me, they're struggling right now. That's why Dr. Vicki and I actually wrote the book on the new thriving medical practice. We want to show doctors in private practice how to thrive. You bet. Yeah, and so folks, if you think about it, um, you're just working with other entrepreneurs. It, they just so happen to be in the medical billing, the medical field, and they're doctors. And believe me, Patrick, you and I know quite a few doctors. We've obviously over 24 years, we've met a lot of doctors. And the majority of the folks, doctors we've ever met, they want to remain independent. Uh, but again, with some of the articles that we showed earlier, uh, they feel like there's no other hope than to become an employee of a, of a hospital or a large group. Yeah, so basically doctors are saying this. They're saying, please help keep us as an independent business owner. I want to own my own practice. I don't want to go for, to work for a hospital or a large group. That's happening more and more. But folks, we even know doctors. We talked about this in our meeting today, Eric, that doctors are now coming out of having worked for a hospital system for say, say their contract was for two years. And then they go back into private practice because, well, they just didn't like working for somebody else and being told what to do. And uh, so right. it's not working out for the hospitals like they thought it was going to. And besides, a doctor doesn't realize that when they sign that contract with the hospital, they give up all their patients. So when they get ready yeah. to start all over again, they are starting from scratch. Yes, they are. So uh, if anybody has any questions, obviously, folks, you can type those questions in here. But as we begin here today, we just want to let you know that you as an entrepreneur can work with other entrepreneurs, except your entrepreneurs that you're going to be working with are doctors themselves. Uh, you may run across a doctor that may be trying to even get back into private practice or independent practice. Uh, so you're, you're right cusp there to help them uh, get things going there. And then you may run into a doctor who's been thinking about it, but with, as we know, Patrick, we've seen a lot of our licensees actually help save doctors from making that poor decision of becoming an employee of somebody. Right. So 
you know, and, and whenever it drives it down to you and me, down to those that are listening to their, here today, I think any of us would rather go see a doctor that's independent, independent, mindly thinking than not have to be told by the hospital, oh, well, if you're going to see Mr. Phillips today, uh, do this, do this, and do this, and get him out of the office. Uh, right. We want free thinkers. We want doctors to do what they feel like they can do best for us. Yeah. All right. All right. So there are going to be six things that we're going to be talking about today. And Patrick, I don't know if you've got one of your polls that you're going to want to push up there in just a little bit, but there are six items that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, we're going to be talking about leads, free leads that uh, uh, you might want to find on the Internet or other companies might want to give you. Uh, we're going to talk about how those are actually dead leads. Uh, we're going to talk about getting more mark, warm leads from networking. Uh, this is a specialty of Patrick and obviously one that we utilize in our training class. Uh, be the expert with educational events. Uh, let doctors come to you at trade shows. Become the office staff best friend. And finally, how to automate your marketing with sales reps. So, folks, these are the six topics that we're going to try to punch through uh, within the next few minutes here. So, Patrick, let's start off with this first one about leads. I mean, there is there's some companies out there that uh, say, hey, we'll give you a, a, a list of doctors to go after. Yes, and what they've really just done is bought a, uh, a database uh, of all the doctors in the United States or in your area, at least, that has their name and phone number and maybe their specialty and you know address and so forth, contact information. But folks, that's the same thing you've gotten by just Googling doctors in my area. <laughs> you would have found the same <laughs> exact information. But they make it seem like these are special leads. These are like maybe the people have inquired about the, you know having somebody do their medical billing. That is not the case. There are no doctors who are out there that are on lists uh, of, of people who are want, because they can find a medical biller on their own. They don't have to get on a list of some kind and then have all these different companies contacting them. Besides, you might get the same list that somebody else who is bought into that uh, franchise or business opportunity, you might get the same list as somebody in that area. Right. And so they're, they're right. just, yeah, they're, when we call them dead leads, it means they're dead in that, uh, you know, uh, working those leads will probably just have you bugging the doctors and their staff. That's all they do is basically just get bugged by people who are calling and, uh, you know, calling on them in person or on the phone, trying to see if they're interested. Folks, doctors are not interested in doing medical billing and having it done. Uh, they have to be educated to some point. Some of them are doing it themselves, of course. And those who've already decided to outsource it already have an outsource. Uh, solution. So the real question should be, uh, with these leads, uh, these lists of doctors, how is it that our licensees are signing up doctors every week if they already right. do billing or if they've already outsourced it? Well, that's what we're going to cover here today. We have ways of getting in and educating the doctor and becoming an expert in your field that positions you the right way with the doctor, and they want to uh, outsource their billing to you after that. Yeah. And folks, remember, you know, anybody that says, hey, we're going to give you a list of leads or a list of doctors. It's just like the proverbial carrot that you can't ever get. It's always going to seem like you're in what's going to happen with you. You will become frustrated and feel like, oh, my goodness, I can't do this. So that's what Patrick's saying. We're going to kind of talk with you through this. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, Patrick, people are going to see this this sign here. But really, this is not necessarily applying to any body that's dealing with any business with the doctors themselves. Yeah, I mean, people have seen these kinds of no soliciting signs. I don't know if they went into detail like this one does and says no politics, no magazines, <laughs> no candy, no religion, no exceptions. But the point is, we're trying to emphasize here, guys, that those, those leads are just cold leads. And nobody likes to be called on cold, right. you know, over the phone or in person. So again, ask whatever company says they're going to provide you with leads, be sure to ask them, where did you get the list specifically? And are these people who are interested already in outsourcing their billing? The answer will right. be no. I'll tell you that. Right. Hey, look, <laughs> because there's not... If, look, Eric, if we had a list of doctors that were interested in outsourcing their billing, wouldn't we just contact them ourselves as a company yeah. and do their right. billing? Their billing because we, as a company, American uh, business systems, we do not uh, go out and do any kind of medical billing. We're not in the medical billing business, folks. We're in the business of training and supporting people like you. 
Right. Another and so question. folks, if you want a company, that's, yeah, that's if, a good question to ask a company, right? Are you in yes. the medical business? Do you do medical business yeah. yourself? If they do, then they're a direct competitor of yours, right? They might just sign up or all the doctors that you contact. <laughs> or, or if they are, uh, you know, selling the software directly to the doctors, they themselves will become your biggest competitor. Well, Folks, that's if, if you, question to ask. Uh, if you find a company that has software, just say, now, let me ask you, do you sell this software under this name or any other name to doctors directly? If they do, then you're 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 in direct competition with the company who is selling you a, a training support package. That's right. Uh, I'm going to share this cup, next couple of screens here. And Patrick, I don't know if you've got a a, a poll that you may want to throw out there in just a second. But uh, folks, if you're working off a leads list, uh, if you walk into doctors, they're going to see you as just a cold call salesperson. Uh, that's what we don't want to happen. We don't want the doctor staff or the doctor them saying, say, look, stay out of my office. Don't need your stuff. Don't need you. I got everything I need. Uh, folks, that's just not the way to do it. And we don't ever tell you how to cold call an office. However, if you approach the doctors in the proven ways that we show you how you're going to become considered as an educational resource. And we're going to show you that by one of the sources of marketing that you're actually going to have as part of your suite of ways to get in front of doctors. We're going to show that to you here just shortly as well. Okay, Eric, let's just see if everybody's paying attention. Okay. Uh, okay. Very good. I just put up what's called a quick poll. Think of it as a pop quiz. Okay. So if you <laughs> there you go. in the last few minutes, you know that free leads are certain kinds of leads. So just click the one you think is the answer there and we'll see what the answer really is here in just about one second. Ready? If you've clicked on that, uh, oh, I see a few of them here are clicking. Well, there's several of them there that are clicking various things. Yes. So again, according to what we just taught you in the last few slides, I'm going to show you what that is. I'm going to close the poll right about now. I don't see anybody else answering it. So here we go. And uh, here's the results. <laughs> Most people got it right. They're dead leads. You can think of them as fake leads, so I guess, couldn't you? Yeah. They are low-cost leads, that's for sure, <laughs> if they were just given to you. But uh, that was the answer. All right, let's go. Very good. That's awesome. Thanks, to, thanks everybody, for uh, bumping in there with us. All right, so now what we're going to really talk about, uh, connecting with doctors. Uh, these are based upon relationships. Patrick, I think there's nothing better then you can, anybody can develop is, the, is that with a relationship with a doctor. Because if we think about it, uh, we, any of us that are in medical billing or revenue cycle management, uh, the doctors that we see here illustrated, we actually have the way in which they get paid. So wouldn't anybody want to develop a relationship with someone that's handling my money? That's the big part of it. Right. And by the way, uh, if you're wondering how we help you build relationships, that's what we're talking about in our live training workshop, folks. We go into about a dozen different ways that you can build relationships with doctors. You may not know any doctors right now, except maybe for the one that you go to every once in a while for, you know, getting checked out. But we're going to show you how to build those relationships based on our 25 years of experience in knowing how to market to doctors. And the other thing is just as important in it, Eric. Yeah, and just building trust with people. I mean, uh, I think, Patrick, a lot of people get, uh, <laughs> we'll use this word, disenfranchised uh, when they think, uh, well, I've tried this situation or I've tried this, uh, uh, this, this way of trying to market. But folks, if you're not marketing in ways in which you're not building relationships and you're not building trust, remember, all you become is a salesperson and no doctor even wants to listen to you. So it's not a matter as whether or not our system, as we showed you in those four quadrants earlier about the ABS advantage, it's not a matter as it, whether those are going to work or not. We know those work. But without these two components, Patrick, uh, nothing's going to happen. That's right. So let's show you how now, step by step, there are ways that you can build relationships with doctors and the people that know the doctors and build that trust factor. Look, people don't do business with anybody that they don't know, like, and trust, right? We're going to show you how to get to that point where the doctor trusts you implicitly uh, and position yourself correctly in their eyes as the expert in your area. So here's one way to do it. 
get warm leads from yep. networking. Yeah, tell us about networking, Patrick. That sounds like a dirty word and an icky, icky word, <laughs> networking. <laughs> First of all, it has nothing to do with network marketing. Don't get confused. This is not uh, uh, you know, bringing people over to your house for a, an ice cream supper and setting up a whiteboard and showing them how that if they get two people and those people get two people and those people get two people, you, know, you can build an income. That's network marketing. We're talking about business networking. And even if you know kind of what that is, folks, it is the number one marketing method that our licensees right now are using to get their first client. It's the number one thing. So we're teaching you right off the bat here on this webinar, what we're gonna teach you in detail in that week's uh, workshop. Now remember, we, we have just uh, basically one hour here to go through all of this today. We go into detail in this in the 40 hours of training that you get down here in Texas. But is the, it is the number one way. Patrick, I know that as we're looking at this and people thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to network? Folks, don't don't uh, panic. Uh, don't hyperventilate. Don't pass out on your keyboard right now. Uh, we're going to show you ways in which it is so painless to be able to do this. Uh, we'll give, we're going to give you some tips today. But in that training workshop, we're going to teach you, actually, our trainer who has been doing this now for years is going to show you the most painless way to actually do business networking. Uh, Patrick, this is one of the things that kind of kicked you off in, uh, from just working for somebody else to working and having your own business anyway in the first place. Uh, you started a, a networking group here in Dallas even before ABS. Yeah, I actually started this up with my son and my daughter. They got involved with uh, our business early on. And then we started a networking group in Dallas that had over 700 members, all paying us about $800 a year in dues. The reason we were able to do that is because I learned the right way to network and the wrong way to network. And I taught <laughs> sessions and, and workshops on exactly how to build your business using purely using business networking. So these are some of the groups that are out there uh, our group is not listed there. We've shut that down many years ago. But the point is that we actually got this thing uh, going and learned what we needed to teach our licensees with our own system. So BNI, that's a big uh, organization that's out there, Business Networking International. We'll teach you about all yep. this in the workshop, how to find these groups, how to join them, how to go to them absolutely free until you're ready to join them, and uh, how to get some experience out there in actually meeting other people. Uh, Eric, there's uh, basically an another screen here is just talking about people because think of it this way folks you're just basically getting together with other human beings that's really all it is and talking sometimes you're standing around like these folks are here sometimes you're just in a group sometimes you go to a breakfast or a luncheon or even after hours you're you're at a, a restaurant that has drinks and snacks and all you're doing is meeting other business people who want to do the same thing you do find clients Absolutely. And Patrick, I don't think we mind, you know, talking about some of the things that you could actually be doing today. Uh, it doesn't hurt you to go watch people in action. I mean, uh, I'm sure everybody on the call today is local to some community that they're a part of. Just go Google your local area chamber of commerce. I, Patrick, I know that in every little city area that there is, there's a little chamber of commerce somewhere. And I know that they have monthly luncheons. And if you do nothing else, just go to a luncheon and just observe and watch people. That costs you right. 10, 15, maybe 20 bucks for a lunch. Just go watch others. You talk about a great little uh, kick in the pants, so to say, to help you kind of get over the fear and just watch others of what they do. That It's an incredible experience in the first place. Yeah, and these are not all uh, suit and tie wearing uh, business people like bankers. These are just common folks like you that are in your community who are trying to get together and talk about uh, their business. And they're looking for right. prospects, for uh, clients, for, for leads, just like you are. So we teach you to look for what's called power partners. Power partners are just people who sell to the same group of people that you want to sell to. So if somebody's actually marketing to doctors or have connections to people who do, that's who you want to partner up with at these meetings so that you can find out who they know and they uh, find out who you know. And we're going to teach you exactly step by step what to exactly say at these meetings when you're introducing yourself and exactly what to do and not do uh, to make sure that your networking is very professional. 
You bet. Patrick, do you have a a, a poll that you can put up uh, with anything to do with networking? Gosh, I wish I did. I uh, don't know, but I'm going to look here. Uh, there's one here that uh, might uh, jog some people's memories. Let's see. These are this one here. No, that's uh, something else. Okay, here it is. Launching. Folks, okay, here we go. Doctors is based on what two factors? There's only two factors in this list that we talked about earlier that the doctors, uh, you know, it's how you connect with doctors, what helps you connect with doctors. So I uh, see some folks uh, answering the poll. If you haven't seen it on your screen yet, get back over to the window where we're at. Quit reading your email and surfing uh, YouTube <laughs> and, and click on a, a couple of these things. And we'll see if people uh, remember what those two things are. Uh, well, actually, uh, here, I'm going to close the poll because it looks like everybody's kind of answered that should have. And here's the answer to the poll right here. Yep. <laughs> That's the only two that we talked about. Relationships and trust. Good. Hey, people are actually paying attention, Eric. I'm, I'm impressed. I did that. Good. Everybody stay on your toes. You never know what we're going to throw at you next here. So uh, I know that uh, the third thing that we're going to talk about today is to become the expert with educational events. And Patrick, uh, what we're doing today is basically this part of the marketing. We're educating those that are on the webinar today. And folks, the more you get to learn about the business, like those blogs that we showed you, follow Adam's blogs. You're going to start to learn a lot about medical billing based upon the blogs that we send out. Then if you put that into practice, you actually go to a chamber of commerce meeting and you sit there and, and someone asks you, so what do you do? You can say, well, I am uh, developing and preparing to become a medical revenue manager. And if they pay, well, they well, what is that? And you can say, well, I help do the billing for doctors is what I do. Uh, some of the articles that you've learned from Adam on the blog, blogs, just simply say, did you know that this is a $90 billion uh, type of business? So, I mean, you're going to learn a lot, and that's what we're doing today. Hopefully, you're going to walk away with some something that you've learned today. Yeah, so the educational events, let's talk about those just for a second. Uh, <clears throat> we position you as the subject matter expert. Now, you're asking yourself, how is that possible in a week's time? Well, first of all, we cover everything you need to know to become a revenue a medical revenue manager in that one week's time, magically. <laughs> did, did we, oh, I, I think we lost you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, 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 I see that you were choking there. Uh, all right, I'm glad that you came around. Absolutely. One of them is called a lunch and learn. It's a, pre a brief presentation by you or your power partner uh, to, to a group of office managers or decision uh, makers like doctors during their lunch period. Everybody has to eat lunch. Most of them do. And you can even provide that lunch for a small amount of money. You can provide lunch for 10 people for probably, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, $100 a little more. And the point is, folks, that you've gotten now their attention for that half hour, right? You're sitting right there in front of them. We have about uh, a, about a half a dozen different topics with PowerPoint slides right. already developed, ready for you to present. And in fact, we've got those presentations on our licensee support website already recorded. You can watch those and learn exactly what to say. It's a wonderful way to position yourself as the expert. Anybody who gets up and makes any kind of presentation, even if it's a group of people just like you see sitting here around the table. They are the expert all of a sudden, just magically. You, you bet. And Patrick, uh, imagine, I mean, we're, we're giving people what they could do. So imagine that they had these presentations, they've attended a one or two Chamber of Commerce luncheons, and all of a sudden they, I, I, let's say I meet up with you there, and you're a, a real estate person or an insurance salesperson. I just may say, hey, Patrick, uh, I'd love to take you to lunch and take them to lunch, pull a presentation up or just discuss that you're doing a lunch and learn. Right. And it may be with that power partner that can yeah. lead you to a doctor. That's right. It's, it's just a matter of connecting with the right people in your community because there's somebody in every one of those groups that we talked about earlier, the networking groups that knows a doctor or knows someone who knows a doctor. You see, it's that, uh, who is it? Kevin Bacon, six, uh, you know, ways of connecting to the president of the United States. <laughs> yeah. 
And then, All and right. then if you want to do a, a larger group, obviously you can do large groups, uh, just like what we're showing right here. Sure. A lot of hospitals, for example, love to have educational uh, seminars like this given to the doctors because, again, they're always trying to educate the doctors and uh, let them continue to learn. And the doctors are interested when it's a, a topic such as uh, how to be compliant with HIPAA or how to get ready right. for the new ICD codes that are coming out or how to collect more money in your practice. We, we have subject matter already prepared, folks, that you can present. Now, don't worry about the fact that you're going to get up in front of a group of people. Sometimes it's not this large, but the point is all you're doing is using the slides that we've already pre uh, pre uh, provided for you. We've, we've created them. And sometimes we even have uh, people who can help you out with those presentations as well. We'll be talking about yeah. Dr. Vicki here in just a minute. You bet. Uh, Patrick, it is uh, 4.40. Boy, this, this hour is flying by, so we've got about 20 more minutes here, and we're just now getting to the fourth one. So we've gone through th four of these, but you're throwing up another poll here or another quick question. Yeah, the leads you get from networking are what kind of leads? Here it is. It's right here on the screen. you got five choices. Only one of them is correct in this case. So pick the right one. Let's see who's picking. Oh, there's a whole bunch of people here picking the right one. A few of them are picking <laughs> the wrong one. Yeah, <laughs> okay. And I'm going to give you about five seconds here to get uh, that completed, and then we'll throw that one up on the screen as well. Folks, we're just trying to help you reinforce, and this is part of our ongoing training for our licensees, to have these kinds of sessions where we are interacting with you live, just like we are today. Well, unless you're watching the recorded version of this later on. But today, <laughs> uh, Wednesday, uh, April the 4th, this is exactly what we're doing right now. So let me close that up, and I'll share the results for this one as well. They're warm leads. That's right. Uh, the ones, the leads you get from networking are free, I guess you don't pay for them, but you might have to join a group or a chamber of commerce or something. So you, you would actually be paying for them, I guess that way, but networking leads are all warm leads, meaning that person knows, uh, somebody who knows somebody that knows the doctor. You bet. All right. So whenever it comes to number four, this is another thing that we teach actually in our training class, because not only we, we teach you how to do that, but we actually have trade show booth material. Uh, which is a backdrop and everything else that you would need for a trade show. Uh, how about letting those doctors come to you? There's one of our tabletops uh, that we have right there. And one of our licensees actually letting doctors come to her. Yeah. Look, folks, these types of trade shows are held all over your city every week. You may not be aware of them, but your chamber of commerce would probably be able to tell you every one of the trade shows that are going on this week or this month in your city. And they don't have to be medically oriented uh, at all. This one wasn't, for example. Uh, this is like a, a home and garden show or something that she went to because look, doctors are human beings, right? They go to these trade shows themselves, them and their spouses. And so you're going to connect with doctors and with people who know doctors at any type of trade show. We'll show you exactly how to find those trade shows in your area. We, uh, we again have all the booth materials already ready for you. We'll show you what questions to ask, how to get people to leave their information with you and all the details. It's a great way to have, like Eric said, have the doctors come to you. You don't have to go to them. They just walk right up to you and talk. And here's, here's one that we're looking at right here. And, and here we've got one of our licensees, Tim, Tim Warren. He's got the big yeah. part of it, which actually has a little booth there. You can see uh, right next down over to here. But uh, folks, as Pat Patrick says, you get to obtain leads. You Obviously, you build credibility. Uh, you can have someone take pictures like uh, we did here. We had someone take pictures of Tim. He's putting this up on his website. So obviously, it's showing that he is out there doing what to do. he does best, and that is develop relationships. And we teach you at these to set up what's called a practice analysis. Now, again, we go into real detail in this in the workshop. But basically, we've come up with a three-page questionnaire that you can go into a doctor's office and find out exactly where they are on their revenue and, and, and uh, where they're behind and so forth, how much money is owed to them and so forth. That's what we do at the trade shows. You can set up appointments with them to come do it at their office, or you can set up demos of our system if they want to see a, a live demo uh, of the actual uh, system that we showed you screenshots of earlier. And we can do those demos for you, too. Don't remember, uh, don't forget that Eric said earlier, we can do that for you. Just get back with the person who sent you to this webinar and we'll do a one-on-one -on -one demo and answer all your questions about the software. I know the software is one of those things in people's minds, Eric, that they, they can't visualize it, but when they see these demos, 
uh, they get it, don't they? Absolutely. And, and, I, and I say, folks, uh, if you have not taken advantage of seeing a demo at least once, <laughs> uh, you're shortchanging yourself because it is so vital in helping you, I believe, and Patrick believes, in helping you make the decision whether you're going to go forward with it or not go forward. I think you're going to get to see what's going to separate you from all other medical billing companies out there. That's where you get to take advantage of educating yourself through the means that we have here, whether it's webinars, whether it's the demos, whether you're talking with somebody that we have, we, we try to provide you with everything that you need. Patrick, number five, I mean, this is the one that everybody's afraid of. That poor little girl that sits behind that glass. Uh, gosh, I'll never get through that gal. Yeah, some people refer to that person as the gatekeeper, as if they're the ones that can keep <laughs> you from going through the gate uh, and getting to the doctor, him or herself. But folks, we have a ways of helping you to become that office staff's best friend. Now, it could be the office manager. It could be the person that's in charge of the billing. It could be a several. It could be the wife or husband of the doctor, right, that's up front there. But folks, we have ways of doing that. One of them is by specialized, uh, personalized giveaways like this a bottle of candy mints here. It looks like medicine, as you can see from the label we've enlarged there. It's really just a, uh, it says, take two by mouth when feeling stressed about your cash flow. <laughs> it's a stress reliever. And uh, it's a wonderful door opener. People just think it's hilarious. They love it. They show it around. Just be sure and bring one for everybody in the, in, in the whole uh, office there because they all want one. We're going to show you how to put these things together for less than a dollar a jar. Yeah, I mean, M&Ms go a long way. I think this one's jelly beans. I mean, it's just, as you, I think you and I were talking earlier, you said uh, the one, one way to get past the, the, the gal at the door at the gate or getting, become best friends with people like that is sugar. <laughs> sugar <laughs> always right. works. Now, now this is just one of many methods, methods that we're going to teach you in the workshop, folks. We're just giving you a little preview or a little glance at some of the stuff that we've come up with. This is just one of them. And then of course, there's the books that we've mentioned earlier that Dr. Vicki and I have written. These are books that you can actually give to that office manager to make them your friend. And they, of course, by sharing them with the doctor, become the hero or the heroine. Is that a good word? That sounds like a, a drug. Heroine. That's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway. yeah. That's the right word. So we've got yeah. three so primary books that you can utilize for that. And as you can see from that one there in the middle, uh, no, that doesn't show uh, their name on it. Oh, the one on the far left does, though, if you can kind of uh, look very closely at that uh, book on the left, you'll see that it's uh, the one that's uh, how patients can get more patients, how, how doctors, physicians can get more patients. It has your name on there. You can actually put that on the middle book as well. We just didn't have one here that we showed you there. But that's, that's because, folks, we want to give you that, we want to position you as the expert and help you become that person's best friend. Uh, by giving a gift to anybody, you, you kind of ingratiate them to yourself. Yeah, you know, I've got it put up here right now, that just the new thriving medical practice. It shows down there the forward by uh, a Susan Smith, CMRM, and then we kind of blow that up a little bit more so you can see that right there. Yeah, and folks, your name is on the inside cover, on the title page. It's also got all of your contact information printed right inside the book at the end of the forward. So we've worked it out so that this becomes a marketing tool for you. Uh, this is uh, sells for $24.95 on Amazon, this book does. You can buy it with your name printed inside the book and out on the outside of the book for about $4 a copy. That's our actual printing cost. So talk about a great business card to give away. This is a book worth $25 that you can actually hand to the doctor. We'll show you how to get it into the hands of the doctor. Uh, sometimes you have to go past the gatekeeper. We'll show you how to do that if you need to or work with that person to make sure that they, they, they put it on the doctor's desk. A wonderful marketing guy, uh, idea that nobody's uh, thought of but us. Yeah, and, and we're gonna show you a couple of other things about the book in the training class. As Patrick said, you're gonna mark this book up. You're gonna show them, it's, you're gonna leave people exactly right where they need to go inside the book. So whether they read the whole thing or not, you're gonna help them drive them to these specific areas of the book and again, that's all part of, of what you uh, you get here at ABS. Actually, before we jump any further, I'm going to go back to the trade show booth here slide and, and go ask the question from Stephen. Stephen's asking the question, 
uh, what are the expenses to the licensees for the use of the trade show posters or the trade show booths? Uh, just the shipping cost. That's all we charge. You know, whatever it takes to ship it to you and you ship it back to us. There's no charge for the actual booth itself. Folks, we spent $5,000 for one of those booths. So it's a very valuable tool that you have available to you anytime you need to. You just book it. There's an online form you can fill out on our licensee support site. And when you do, you're, you're basically reserving that. There you go. Yeah. So we, in our training class, you're going to learn all of these different techniques. Obviously, it, it, you know what we're talking about in less than an hour, all these different little sections here, uh, we're spending three, three and a half, almost four days of information with Cynthia going over all of these topics. So obviously, you're going to have a great amount of, of education that you're going to get with. And then, like you said, Patrick, even after the live training, you and Dr. Ratner actually host these Friday webinars for licensees to even further educate our licensees. Right. I mentioned earlier, Eric, that uh, we're going to show you how to get that book right directly into the hands of a doctor. One of the ways we do that is using a very specialized envelope, a very special direct mail program that we have set up that you can utilize to actually get that book into the doctor's hands. Um, I think we have a slide for that. Yeah, there. it's right there. It should be shown. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that uh, there's a big delay here today for some reason, Eric. I don't know why I'm seeing things after the fact. But uh, anyway, there it is right there. We're going to show you exactly how to utilize that. And we have specialized. There are several different types of envelopes available. But that's a, a one way to get it right directly into the hands. It's a very uh, powerful way to get past the gatekeeper or to send something to the gatekeeper to make sure he or she opens it themselves. You bet. Yeah, so we've got all of those different techniques. But Patrick, there's going to be some people that says, you know what, I actually want to grow my business quicker and faster and maybe even larger, uh, duplicating myself, maybe even using sales reps. So uh, this last little topic we're going to talk about is how to automate your marketing with sales reps. Yeah, and folks, sometimes you don't have the time. Maybe you're working a full-time job, for example. We do have licensees who start this business still working a full-time job, believe it or not. And you might not even have the inclination. Maybe you don't, don't want to do any marketing yourself, no matter how easy it is. That's okay. We will show you, and we have an entire sales rep program to find people all over the country. You might be in uh, one part of the country, and that sales rep is in a completely different part of the country. That's okay, because you can sign up doctors anywhere in the United States, including Alaska and Hawaii. So we're going to show you how to do that step by step. Uh, we have an entire uh, automated system of finding those people, hiring them, asking them certain questions, how to kickstart your business using those people, and grow in markets outside of your own area. Eric, as you know, we have licensees who have doctors all over the country, and they didn't get those yes. by you know, calling on those doctors they got them through finding sales reps in different parts of the country. So folks, you can build this business as big as you want and get to the point where we have some licensees that have hundreds of doctors that they have as clients, or you can keep it as small as you want and just work out of your spare bedroom and your underwear. There you go. And so folks, again, during the live training workshop, we're going to teach you exactly how to find sales reps, how to interview those, those folks, how to hire them, how to train them, how to pay them. Uh, and obviously, how to train them will be utilizing uh, our secured area just for our licensees. It's our licensee support site. Uh, we've gone into much detail on, on that on some other webinars, Patrick, but uh, this is sp specifically how we help you train those sales reps. So you don't have to think about, oh, do I have to send those sales reps all the way back to Dallas for training? You don't have to do that either. That's all done right through here. Patrick, I know that we're getting close to the time limit here, but uh, did you have some more uh, questions or some more polls that you want to throw up as we kind of wrap things up this afternoon? Glad you asked. Here's one right here. <laughs> uh, we've taught you several things today in this webinar, folks, about how you can become the expert, you know, the subject matter expert, how they can look at you and picture you as the expert, at least, by doing several of the things that you see right here. So just click all the ones that you want here that you think might apply to this because there are several. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of them is pretty obvious because we did talk about, uh, you know, one of the things really, really heavy, but there's several things that you could do uh, to make those things 
make those people feel like, like you're the expert guy that they want to do business with. Everybody wants to do business with experts, right? If you're buying insurance or buying roofing for your house or windows for your house or a pool, you always want to find the company that you think is the smartest and best that's out there. And this is one way to do it. All right, I'm going to close that poll and uh, I'll just show the results there so everybody sees. Primarily, we talked about holding those educational events, but by giving out free books and even attending meetings that the other doctors are at, like at the uh, uh, different medical societies, for example, that are in your area, uh, keeping in touch with doctors, all those things can help them picture you as being uh, the expert. Okay, Eric. You uh, bet. Eric, I'm going to run, if that's okay with you, and let you just kind of wrap this thing up. I've got other meetings coming up, believe it or not, even at five o'clock central time. So <laughs> thanks again for putting this whole thing together. It's been very educational for people, I'm sure. You bet. Thanks, Patrick, for, for joining us this afternoon. So fo folks, as Pat Patrick kind of logs off here, I'm going to kind of wrap up, uh, share with a couple of things with you. Uh, first of all, I'm going to tell you about our 100% money back guarantee. Folks, we mentioned to you earlier, without spending a dime so far, you can sign up, get with us, and at least see a demonstration of the software. Obviously, every Wednesday at four o'clock central, we're here educating you on different topics. Uh, so a lot of the education that you're getting, you're getting from us with no money that you're having to spend with us. Uh, we are putting ourselves out there to try to give you as much information as you can to make the right decisions. But folks, once you've kind of narrowed it down, you say, okay, I want to go with ABS, we even do that through training. So after you've paid the $26,990 and you've signed up, you've come to training, uh, even through the end of the week, if you still feel like for whatever reason, you, you kind of came with a few questions, those questions never got answered, and you're still a little uncomfortable, no matter what it is, for whatever reason it is, you just don't feel like this is the right business for you, then folks, really the only thing you'd be out at that time is your week of training, and then obviously the hotel and the travel for you for you getting here. So, I mean, you don't have to think about you, you're going to lose everything. However, we have pretty good confidence that once you get through the training and you've done everything you've done with us up to this point, you've been through the webinars, you've been through a demo demonstration, you've actually talked with other ABS licensees. You get to the training. By the end of that training, you you will know whether this is something that you can do whether uh, uh, for, for whatever purpose that you wanted to do for. And so folks, again, we had that, it's in our contract, so you can just take advantage of it right there.